In this video I'm going to show you how I made this oval diamond solitaire. Check it out. The diamond I'm going to set into the ring is a 59 point oval diamond that's 4.7 mil by 6.2 mil and I'm going to be making the ring with 18 karat yellow gold so I've got a piece here that's uh, 2.5 mil square and that's 45 mil long at the moment. I've annealed this piece and um, the finger size that I'm aiming for is M and a half so it's quite an average size really so by the time I finish doing the stretching with the roll mill I want this to be around about 60 mil long. I know that sounds quite random, but um, there's a lot of tweaking we can do at the forging stage to make it bigger in size. And also we're going to split the shoulders open. I'll turn it and just do the same on the 90 degree turn. And I'm happy with that now. So what I'll do is I'll just open the rolls up and squeeze it onto the middle of the ring and just roll up again to the black mark so you'll feel the roll just tension up as you get to that black mark because it is thicker there so you'll feel that and you'll see that it's taken on a flat profile I'll just uh, tighten it up a little bit more I've not annealed it so it is getting a little bit tough so once I've done this I will anneal it And I'm still very confident that I will be able to work it up to the right size. So I use my ring bender to first of all start the bend right at the ends. So do one side and then the other and then you can just concentrate on getting the two ends together. And then make sure that these Plenty of flux on the joint that I'm going to fuse. Get a really nice sharp pinpoint flame like so. So nice oxidising flame. And as soon as it gets very very close to melting temperature, run the wire into the gap there. Almost to the melting temperature. So it's just there now. In fact if it starts melting, which it has, that's not such a bad thing because you just want to make sure the melted gold runs into the into the gap and also make sure that, it, that you can see the melt all the way around flatten out those areas are just hammered and feed the very top of the ring in but not very far it's only Around about, you should be flattening out around about 10 mil at the top. Tighten up again, run it in again, and that will give me enough room now to put a split in the top. Uh, so you can see that it barely needs much of a file up to um, get it into shape. I've just annealed it as well, so I'm ready to put the split in the top. So because of the thickness of the wire, 4 mil stake, let's just put the stone on top and just see if I squeeze that into shape later, or into the oval shape. It might even be just a wee bit too big, so I can tighten it up. I'll just cut that for now, and then um, we'll have another look. Get the joint together. It's just a matter of using my judgement for this. I can always stretch the ring up if need be, but I think that would be the right size. So when I put the stone on top, you can just see the metal either side on the long side of the oval. But once I squeeze that into shape, 
that should be about right. Okay, so I've cut myself a little piece of hard solder there. Okay, now I'll just squeeze the jump ring together. Get the right shape. So I know that that will be hidden now when the stone is in place. Okay, I'll give that a bit of a clean up before I start to attach the claws. Just use my buff stick. Get rid of any tool marks and the excess solder. So now I'll mark out for where the claws are going to go and to help me do that I'll just put my bezel into my gauge and uh, by doing that I can see if the oval is square into the parallel jaws here. So with that I can see where the contact points are and that will help me just mark out either side of where the contact is to make sure that I get the claws in the right position. So when you position claws for an oval stone they've got to be weighted towards the... So get your burr going fast first before you hit your work and then burr around about a third to a half way into the thickness to make sure we get the right shape I'm just going to rest my wire in there and see if I need to open it out or anything that looks fine so I'll do the other two okay so I'll just grab the the wire with my round nose pliers around about 10 mil or so towards the end and I can form the U shape. And we'll just see what the spacing is like. So I'm just going to solder a U on both ends so that holds perfectly well. So I've got that right straight away, but you might have to do some adjusting to get that to work for you. I'll just uh, trim that, do exactly the same, and then I can solder the four points there, the two U-bends, on at the same time if I get it right. I'm using hard solder again. So I'll just take out a little section of the U-bend, probably be taking more out in a minute, but I need to just be able to bend them into place. And it's going to be quite a short um, setting, not very high. So um, I'll bring them over into the middle first of all, very carefully. I don't want to damage the claws too much or cause too much in the way of tool marking. So I'll first of all bring them together. Okay that to me 
is going to be too high so um, what I can do is just run my tapered burr in there uh, create a little bit of room so that I can squeeze it tighter together and move it down towards the bezel first of all chop through this way Yeah, I think one and a half mil gives me a little bit of wiggle room that I can file later if need be. And I will open the shoulders up to, it's going to be around about only five or six mil from the centre point. So I'll just show you with my ruler. Yeah, no more than five at this stage. And then we can cut a little bit more if need be later. So it's going to be, I'll show you with my marker pen we're going to go down here down to the line and not past it make sure it's the same on both sides keep the blade moving and no forward pressure whatsoever just turn it till you turn it complete right angle and then you can follow that line around the right curve and shape but I've got enough thick thickness there to file it to get it right so if you make it any less than one and a half mil thick then you're gonna um, get yourself in a bit of trouble if you're off line slightly You just want to open it up enough to be able to get your chain nose pliers in there. These are my nice sharp chain nose pliers. Um, I do actually supply these in the JTS shop, but uh, they sell out in no time. I've got none, none in stock at the moment, but I've got a few coming. So look out for those, they're really good for this kind of work. So, what I'll do is I'll just put a little bit of a sweep in the shoulder so it just curves slightly up towards the setting. Looks a lot more attractive like that. Now your file is going to do the finishing touches to this. But file the very top point part of the shoulder. So try not to take anything off the um, bottom part of the shoulder there. We're just getting the right shape to it. You can just run the rounded part of the file over and just get that nice smooth sweep and that will help. Okay so now do the fine tuning with your needle files and you'll find the barrette file is a really handy one to to use for this because it's got no teeth on the back so you can Tidy up the bottom parts of the shoulder. Now get the shoulders trimmed down. So it just gets it a little bit lower. Get rid of any tool marks. And the way it's going, I'm not sure if I'll actually need to pin it. So pinning is a great idea to uh, hold the setting in place while you solder it, but this looks as though 
I'm just going to hold there as long as I put a little notch in the shoulders. So I'll just show you what I mean. Um, so it's going this way, it's going down about half a mil more before it gets itself perfectly positioned. But I can see that if I put a notch just at the bottom of the top part of the shoulder, if that makes sense. Um, just at that point there, that should grab the bezel and hold the setting in place whilst I solder it and ensure that I'm keeping it dead straight. See that's going to work. Just need to fiddle about with the notch to get the setting dead level. So I'll get the shoulder joints done first then I'll um, take it off the third hand and um, do the bottom of the setting. Once I've done this, I'll pickle it, just sand it up a little bit, and then put it in the tumbler, and um, I'll then be ready for setting the stone. So that um, the solder run right through the bottom, so that's that's all good. And I'll get the right finger size as well. So the ring's cleaned up and ready for the diamond. So first thing I'll do is I'll countersink the top bezel. Um, this is just for the pavilion of the stone to sit in nice and comfortably. I'm going to see how much of a seating cut this will need. I don't think it'll need too much. So you'll see when I put the stone in, it's tilted in one way doesn't quite sit into the setting uh, but you can see that if I put a little notch um, just slightly above the bezel there the girdle should find its way into position and I'm not going to use a heart burr for that I'll just use the same burr as I used earlier which is the crosscut taper burr and just put a nice little nick on the inside of the claws uh, this is just a sideways approach to do this so probably the easiest way to set, to claw set a stone. A very fresh heart burr, they do tend to want to rip round the claw and can be quite disastrous if that happens. So let's see how that looks. So that's nice and snug, nice and level. Very easy setting style this, so um, just needs a bit of a push over. So I always push opposites just to make sure everything's staying in place, nice and square to the shank. So you want that cross square like so. You need to keep taking a uh, reference from the shank and make sure that you are lined up this way. Look. So now I know and trust that it is uh, positioned at the right angle, I'll just uh, squeeze with equal pressure on opposites, just squeeze the claws in like so, do the other two, trap the stone in, make sure that there's no movement, so that's nice and firm, I can just file the top off the claws because they're very long at the moment, and I just file an angle to them as well so that It'll thin them so that I can actually uh, wrap the claw onto the 
crown of the stone a little bit heavy at the moment to do that onto the stone so that's the bit that catches on clothing uh, I use a oversized beader so that's a tool you can make yourself because uh, your beaders aren't that big but this is nice to just cut the end of larger claws like this and just mush the metal onto the stone so just grab the very last bit of the, the claw there and that click is just picking the I'm just forcing the metal a little bit further and just rounding it onto the or burnishing it into the gap there so there's no chance it's going to catch on any clothing now you can also see that I do as much as I can without bracing my work you can um, get a much better view of what you're doing by twisting and turning and working the two hands together so that's pretty much it <clears throat> I'll give it a little bit of a touch up around the claws this is the Shofu brownie it's safe to use against diamonds and corundum but softer stones it will scratch so be careful I'll then finish with a Shofu greeny which will get it to polish and uh, that's safe to use with pretty much any stone There we have it set, polished and finished mm -hmm.